it's Oklahoma. Uh, it looks pretty good. Hi, David. Somebody called you? Uh, not yet. Uh, okay. Hey, John, if you need me, just call her, okay? Okay. Well, I'll make some calls, but I need to put some films. <laughs> I'm calling the grosses for the new neon movie. Slim Blade made $400, Lost Highway $300. You're not going to believe this, Cinerama made $500 today. And those are just advanced tickets. Yeah, that's right. Cinerama used three cameras to photograph a wide-angled view of what the human eye sees, the peripheral vision. It's a 146-degree wide curve, 55 degrees tall. How did Fred Waller, the inventor of Cinerama, come up with that? He spent about 20 years experimenting with what people could see with their own eyes and how the human eye processes information. When it opened September 30th in 1952 in New York, the word hit the street almost immediately that you're going to have an experience at a movie theater that you've never had before. It literally changed the way movies were made by introducing stereo and introducing widescreen. I, my interest uh, in Cinerama came about all through my father uh, exposing me to uh, the process because of Lowell Thomas being connected with it. Uh, Lowell Thomas, uh, uh, the, the famous newscaster that uh, my father had followed closely for years. And when he opened up the newspaper one day to find that the Capitol Theater in Cincinnati, Ohio, about 40 miles from where we lived, was going to be running a new process called Cinerama. Uh, it aroused his interest because of the affiliation of Lowell. So, lucky me, I went with my dad that first time to see a film called This is Cinerama at a theater that was, I was later to find out, one of the first 13 theaters in the world to have this marvelous new process. There's more than 150% more information than regular 35 millimeter film, and all three are running interlocked at the same time, so you get this joined together picture that is sharper and clearer than 70 millimeter and has richer sound than even Dolby surround sound, and that helps propel the audience uh, into the action. I uh, wanted to see it again and again, and I found out I wasn't alone in that cause because many people were making uh, that trip back to that same theater to see that same film a film that didn't even have Hollywood stars. When that curtain opened to its full size and it exposed to me the first time that deeply clear screen, I had never seen anything like that. It was something that, because it was coming from motion picture film, I had to know more about what made it tick that uh, led the way to my doing something about it. I just didn't think about it. One day I finally took the initiative, I'm gonna build my own projectors. I'm gonna run that film because it hasn't been seen for years. The interesting thing to me is that John Harvey has the same kind of persistence that Lowell had. After he's gone, I meet John Harvey, and it's almost as though uh, Lowell's inhabiting his, <laughs> his body here. I have never seen anybody believe in anything like that besides Lowell. How did I meet John Harvey? I was invited by a friend of mine who was a film buff that worked at the local newspaper to visit John Harvey who had a home cinema like I'd never seen before. He set a giant curved screen and three projectors, full 35 millimeter projectors in his home. Uh, he's literally spent 20 years collecting the films and equipment, having parts made that didn't exist, 
splicing together bits and pieces of film from around the world. One of the most important persons to find out was uh, a friend of mine in Holland, because he had seen Cinerama when he was about my age and uh, was impressed with it in the same way. So he found out about me because he works for IMAX in, in Europe and would make a trip to Dayton, Ohio to visit with this man who had put Cinerama into a working state in his home. Uh, Willem Bomeister is his name. Uh, he and I are like brothers now. He has been really a big part in helping me locate film as he's traveled around Europe. Um, when the picture hit the screen, the screen wasn't big, but the clarity was phenomenal. I started just getting soaked up in the film and in awe of the camera work. John explained it as his home was the only cinema in the world. So I made a point of talking to him after the film and saying, you know, John, if there's anything I can do to help bring this back to the public, I want to do it. Along the way, I, I met my good friend Larry Smith. And he was in a position of in being part owner and manager of the New Neon Movies in Dayton to perhaps have a showcase for it, to get John Harvey as his friend to work with him and put Cinerama into that theater. Instead of putting a wall down in the middle and making it into two small ones. So we put together a business plan, pitched it to the landlord, and they looked realistically at the numbers and said it would be very expensive. So what we decided to do was have a letter writing campaign. We figured that if it worked in the miracle of 34th Street where they convinced the judge that the actor really was Santa Claus because there was all this mail, maybe we could convince the landlord to give in to us if we could get a thousand letter writers. Offer up at least a thousand uh, pledges of people saying, yes, if you do Cinerama at the Neon Movies, we would buy tickets. And he was able to achieve that. We had, by the last day, 1,200 letters. The next day, another 200 came in. We had a meeting with the landlord, and I said, can you say no to 1,400 people at the same time? He said, no, but let's put a limit on it, only two months. I said, OK, we'll advertise it's going to play for two months, but if we start selling out, we're going to need to extend it. Once the word broke that we were going to do it, we started getting faxes, phone calls, Federal Express envelopes with checks in them. We were selling out after we first started showing the film for six, seven, eight weeks in advance. We were running out of tickets. We had less than 30 days to install the Cinerama motion picture process, but we worked literally day and night to achieve that. We realized that we were going to be pulling off something that no one had done before on hardly any budget at all, completely re retrofitting the inside of the theater. And we turned around then and said to volunteers, if you want to come, we can't pay you, but we can give you all the popcorn you can eat. And any time we needed some help, we would just holler out into the room, who knows how to do what. Some nights we had Neon Movies employees were the only ones available, and they had volunteered on their own time. They weren't getting paid. Some nights, probably most nights, uh, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, it was my dad. Kind of an interesting story about a family volunteer. My dad and I had drifted apart for a couple of years, and we started working together on this project. We spent more time together than we had spent probably since we built the garage in the backyard. And dad and I hit it off, and by the end of the project, we were both exhausted but hugging each other that we got to spend so much time together. What Fred Waller came up with was a neat idea of slicing the screen into narrow louvers about three quarters of an inch wide. And the neat thing that works with the louvered screen is that all of the screen is aimed at the center of the auditorium. And by aiming the light in the picture, you get sharper clarity, richer color, and more brightness. So that helps propel the action into you. The present day technology that had come about since Cinerama was done away with in 64 allows me to technically achieve those things that it took more manpower to do. So the work that was normally uh, uh, done by four projections, uh, I was able to, to run it by myself. Associated Press came down, wrote a story about what we were doing, and it got picked up by wire services around the country. Uh, the stories ran in the Washington Post, the Seattle Times, and newspapers in San Francisco, in Daytona Beach, Florida, in Austin, Texas. In New Orleans, a TV station called us up. We had radio stations from Washington, D.C. Uh, a radio station in Canada called us and did a live interview that first week. It just didn't stop. We had so many interviews that first week, we wondered if we'd ever get around to showing the movies. We would plan our opening night to be on a Thursday evening on August the 29th, first time in 32 years in America. Mariana Thomas was there in person and she pulled John aside and asked him, did he realize that our opening night for bringing Cinerama back was on the anniversary of Lowell Thomas's death? And John was astounded to say, no, we, he didn't realize that. We had at random picked the date 
because we wanted to open on a holiday weekend and that Thursday night was the anniversary of Lowell Thomas's passing. I appreciated most in um, the first film that he made was the view of America, across America, all those wheat fields, the plains, and the Grand Canyon. It, it was so thrilling to see our country and the way he presented it, of the beauty that he was able to capture, the scenic beauty. You really can't capture that in any other way. Cinerama does that. And it was amazing how many people had brought their children because they were so impressed as children seeing it the first time. They wanted their kids to have that same experience. And a unique thing about a couple of people's comments, people said, you know you have a childhood experience and you hope it's as good later in life, and, but you think maybe it was just I was young and impressionable. Most people come back and say it's better than they remember it. Uh, people coming away from it afterwards, not only thanking me for bring, bringing the process back or projecting Cinerama, uh, but when you see tears you know, on their cheeks, thinking that they would never see something again that they loved so dearly years ago, thinking they would never ever see it again. You can imagine, it's just like uh, a loved one that's passed on and, and, it's, and they're there again. When we started all this work, we knew that it would be a lot of time, trouble, money, expense, sweat equity, that kind of stuff to put it all together. If we can't keep Cinerama playing at the Neon, John's going to have to pull the equipment out and he'll probably take a break for a while just to catch up. John Harvey is a real find. You can't find many projectionists who have been as technically on the ball as he has for 45 years, and he saw all of them come into being. He saw 3D come out in the 50s. He saw Cinemascope, 70 millimeter. He saw VistaVision. He knows how to do it. Uh, the main thing I'd like to see happen uh, for Cinerama would be that it is forever there to be seen and to be heard in the original intent. Uh, and I hope that is done. I hope that is accomplished down the line. I would love to see uh, a building that would forever uh, exhibit uh, Cinerama, offering up the finest quality of prints to project. I would love to see uh, a, a theater that's built from the ground up, uh, where people passing by that building perhaps on a a freeway could every night be seeing the Cinerama logo lit up. And uh, for those people driving by to be reminded that that's where it lives and it can be seen there forever. Uh -huh.